Assalamu alaikum. This presentation is on a group of sutures that were specifically designed to uh, be employed in the not infrequent situation when the wounds have high or excessive tension. Naturally, we would want to avoid the situation where the wound tension is high by doing a better wound support and preparation. Things like closing the wound in layers, obliterating all possible dead spaces, and providing adequate drainage for any accumulation of fluids. But it's not unusual that despite all these efforts, you will still have either um, face a high wound tension or expect to face high wound tension. Situations like when you are dealing with muscles or tendons where you expect tension to build up during the healing a process or when you have a minimal amount of fascia at the wound edges or the skin itself is fragile because of uh, age or because of steroid therapy or diabetes and in situations like this when you are trying to close up a defect with a musculocutaneous heavy flap or if you are repairing uh, larynxes or trachea where the cartilage can spring back to its initial position if you are transposing viscera, whether it's weight from some from the abdominal cavity to bridge a gap in the neck, or if you are dealing with big wounds when um, skin has to be mobilized to cover the donor side of the musculocutaneous flaps, or even if you are doing um, things like autoplasty when you want to reshape the cartilage uh, and form an anti healing using the um, Mostadi sutures, Mostadi technique and sutures to refashion an anti-helix in uh, tough structures like cartilage. We'll go through a group of sutures that were developed to provide better dispersion of the tension in the wounds. The first four of these are the horizontal mattress and different modifications for it, followed by two vertical mattress modification. Uh, the irregular suture, which is a hybrid between the horizontal mattress and the vertical mattress suture, and the interlocking loop suture. The horizontal mattress suture is a good way of dispersing uh, tension in the wound. You would have two points of entry or exit along uh, each side of the wound edge rather than just one point. With a slight modification and the horizontal mattress suture, you can even disperse the tension more efficiently. Rather than tying the knot now on the other side of the wound here, like what we do with the conventional horizontal mattress, we would want to pass the needle back into a loop of the suture strand on the opposite side of the wound edge. If you can just pass your needle in there, you provide a pulley-like configuration here, which disperses the wound uh, tension in a better way. You would notice that the, this configuration would hold the wound in good approximation, even without putting any tension now on the suture ends. I'll drop the needle and drop the other end, but you still see that there is a good wound approximation despite this. Another small modification to the uh, horizontal mattress suture will produce the cruciate or the figure of eight suture. You cross from one side to the other, and now rather than going to this point, you go to the other side again and return back. And now, when you want to tie the knot, you would have a figure of eight or a cruciate type of a suture pattern that holds the wound edges in good approximation. Another simple modification to the horizontal mattress suture is the Utrecht stitch, where you change the shape of the horizontal mattress from a rectangle to a trapezius. So you have two points on one side of the wound that are closer to each other than the other uh, opposite two points. And by having 
the suture line passing diagonally to the wound edge rather than perpendicularly, you spread the tension uh, in a better way. So just a very simple modification that helps in a better dispersion of the wound edges tension. This time it's a modification of the vertical mattress suture, the far near, near far configuration and developed to improve uh, tension dispersion along the wound edges. And the conventional vertical mattress uh, suture, is, uh, which is a far, far uh, near, near type of suture, you end up with two loops of the suture line, uh, one between the near near and one between the far far points. In this configuration you have still two loops but between a far on one side and a near on the other and a far on the other side and a near on the uh, initial side and this provides interlocking of the suture lines and provides better dispersion of the tension. One of the names of this slight modification of the vertical mattress suture is the Smee-Jones suture. It's uh, basically a far, near, near far type of suture. You start from the far point on one side of the wound and go to the near point on the opposite side and then retrieve the needle, cross the wound to the near point on the initial side and then to the far point on the opposite side. So you end up having two loops interlocking with better dispersion of the tension in the wound. Another slight modification to this far near near far type of suture is the fully stitch modification. You do the usual far to near, and then near to far suture. Now you pass the needle through the loop in here, retrieve it, and this will produce the pulley stitch, which holds the wound edges in a much better way. As you can see again, without any tension, without uh, locking the suture or providing any tension on the suture ends, the wound edges were fairly well opposed with this pulley stitch modification. One of the simplest way of dispersing the tension in a high tension wound is this irregular type of suture where the points of penetration to the wound edges don't follow any particular pattern some of these points are close to the wound edge, some are far from the wound edges, and they not necessarily oppose each other. So that's a near point to a far point on the other side of the wound edge. Now you can go further and pass the needle diagonally to a far point on the other side. So this is this is a regular pattern would disperse the wound tension. Say if you are suturing a muscle, for example. The interlocking loop suture or the Kessler stitch is uh, specifically designed for tendon or muscle repair, or can be used in other situations where you expect high tension across the wound edges. Um, and its simplest form. It resembles a horizontal mattress sutures with two points of penetration on each side of the wound edges. The difference is after each of these four points of penetration, there is a loop of the suture strand to include more tissue fibers, either the tendon or the muscle end. And by doing this, the uh, suture is self-tightening, it locks into the tissues and can resist uh, high tension across the wound. And this suture, you start by passing the needle through the cut end of the tendon or the muscle on one side. So let's call this side the near and call this side the far. 
you pass the needle into the near side first, retrieve it, and then either pass it through or be behind the tendon to the other side. Retrieve it again and then pass it through the far side and back through the cut end of the muscle or the tendon. So you've finished one side now and then go to the other side. If this is the far, then you go to the near on this side again through the cut end of the tendon bring the needle out and try to pass it either through or behind the tendon here we are passing it through retrieve it and finally you would want to pass it through the fault point and bring it out through the cut surface of the tendon and by doing this you've made a cruciate horizontal mattress with big loops these loops contain most of the tendon fibers and muscles so you have uh, a repair that could uh, withstand high tension by this, we come to the end on this presentation on eight different uh, sutures that can be used in high tension wounds. Salam alaikum.